And now for something completely different. Hello, ladies, gents, and all the salty doubters that just know that I'm not going to accomplish anything today. Well, you're gonna be proven wrong. Don't look at the runtime. Just have faith in me that I'm going to win this daily challenge. It's not like I get tired of Splunky HD or Splunky 2. I would like to swap back and forth and become proficient at both, not have to like get used to the engine. Either way, I did go into the adventure mode to just kind of, you know, get another feel for the Splunky 2 smooth, buttery smoothness and sleek game mechanics to HD, more rough around the edges approach, which, you know, at the time was extremely polished, but then we got to experience Splunky 2 and got to see the incredible, incredible pinnacle of platforming polish that a Derek U video game can have. Truly impressive. Like that, uh, something that Splunky 2 blows HD out of the water. Just the feel of it, it's so much. I mean, obviously, in my opinion, I enjoy it so much better. The way that the platforming feels. Obviously, HD also the GOAT, where that is concerned. But Splunky 2 is the GOAT 2. It is the sequel to the GOAT. Bigger, brighter, better than ever. Uh, we want... Obviously, we want a sweet lesson of violence against this shopkeeper. But first, we should make sure that the entire level is properly taken care of. Hussah! Can't be pissing off shopkeepers and then have still stuff to do. Are we foolish? Absolutely foolish. Mmm, the Splunky gig. You may have thought, do I even want this hover pack? Hover packs suck. Please. Oh, no! oh baby! <laughs> Did not realize he would have a weapon of his own after I steal his. The one in his pocket. That was very upsetting. I did not enjoy that. I was about to bomb this turkey, but does he get mad if you kill him right next to him? Let's find out. For science! He does not. He has no idea about the turkey genocide that just happened right above him. What an absolute idiot. You thought he would be deeply in tune with the Spelunky shenanigans that happen all around him? But no! No- ah, Oh jeez! I thought that... You know, suddenly suffering damage in front of Antonio Banderas was like, oh, he got pissed off somehow, but no. Just completely random piece of trash, garbage, arrow trap while I was tunnel visioned. That is the thing that's gonna get you in Spelunky 2 all the time. The tunnel vision of one threat. That is why the shopkeepers in this one are not even close to, you know, as threatening individually. But it is the chaos around them that really gets you. They, with all their nonsense, they will get you to focus on them. And then that's when the insta-kill bear trap gets you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's get some extra health thanks to our pile of health. I mean, pile of bombs. And we can carry on through these levels. Yeah! These uh, in-the-face arrow traps are going to be literally my demise. Literally! Let me use a bomb to put it right here. I don't think that's a very good bomb, but good enough. Because it enables me to anger this guy. He's going to get punched in the head. Eventually, I would like to also anger the other guy, but not close enough. But, you know, we, we got the bombs to afford this. All mistakes were made! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Everything's going to, to be all right. They're just going to get punched to death. No problems will be found in this endeavor. I like those robes. Those, those robes would be great. There's Gronk taking matters in his own hands. He is now a free man and nobody, no dirty shopkeeper, is going to keep him down. Problem being, of course, now he made me his freaking accomplice. His, this absolute idiot <laughs> made me into accessory to murder. 
here I was about to be forbidden in the eyes of the law. Not forbidden, but forgiven in the eyes of the law. And he had to go and take out all his frustrations on his captor. And that was indeed his captor, I believe. It was the, the man keeping him down. I'm using Margaret and not our good old friend Paco. Because I believe that the daily challenge, if you have mod Lunky enabled, it kind of barks out, does not compare you to the other players. You're kind of in a bubble of your own. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I think that's the way it works. So I just booted up Vanilla's Blunky Zero mods. So that way we can have a legit playing field. Because, you know, I mean, there's zero blame to be assigned on that. That is an excellent way of doing things. In fact, probably is the best way to do it, right? The, the engine allows you... To play the daily challenge, it's just, you know, we actually don't want to go to the jungle. Um, it allows you to play the daily challenge. It just puts you on a bubble of your own instead of, I mean, I don't want to go to the jungle, but what do you want me to do about this, brother? This is a freaking nightmare. Can I get to the other side? I guess I could just embrace violence against these buffoons. Holy crap. <laughs> or I could just go over to the other side, right? That, that's, there's nothing prohibiting me from using a rope to get back up. And then using bombs to get to the other side. You can't dictate the way that I conduct myself. I am a rebel. I always break outside the mold. Cannot hold me down. Cannot stop me in any capacity. Here I go. Here I go to use a few bombs in a very silly manner. I was going to pick them up and put it back down. That will be 100% worthless in Spelunky 2. And sometimes it's even detrimental because it will get the bomb away from where you want it to, to be. Oh, yeah. Got there. Well, we got there. Just taking a break from all the UFO 50 madness. It's been, you know, I am on record. You are, I'm sure, very much aware of the fact that I am not a pixel graphics guy, okay? I appreciate them for the talent that it takes. There you go. I understand the craft that goes into it. I don't want to use a rope here, but I'm gonna. Just to piss him off and then send him on his way. He's going to go around. Don't worry about it. All right. The price to pay for this arrangement was two ropes. What you got over there, huh? A web gun? What a piece of trash! Uh, pixel graphics. I can totally get past them. I would only appreciate 8-bit pixel graphics, right? The 16-bit pixel graphics, sign me up, baby. I absolutely adore a gorgeous pixel graphics game. I, oh! Don't get out of there. Don't get out of there. No, 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 no. It's all right. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're going to be okay. I'm now forgiven. So all I need to do is not succumb to my one point of health. It's going to be a-okay. Don't worry about a thing. You are worrying, aren't you? You are glancing on the runtime and saying, well, I bet that he just went back into adventure mode. So it wouldn't be a 10 minute daily challenge. How are we? Eight minutes and 50 seconds, huh? Okay, don't worry, we're going to pull through. This is gonna happen. We'll dig through here. Actually, I should be concentrating on that bow and arrow. I think it's right there. We don't trust the pot. Huh? Yeah, there you go. Might as well get a little bit of extra cash while we're at it. Please jump on the swing, thank you, thank you. Uh, bottom line about the entire pixel graphics thing. I can get past them, but I will never consider them pretty. Even the best UFO 50 games, you know, the ones that are supposed to be late in the development cycle, so to speak. Even those, to me, are ugly. Like Cyber Owl, Campanella 3. They, they don't look bad, but I would consider them ugly even though you know the artistry on that pixel art 8-bit 
they're basically pushing 8-bit pixel art as far as it will go. Kind of, sort of. Mm, it's still really not something that super appeals to me. So I am going in U450 with that negative bias. So I think, in fact, that kind of heightens the praise that I give to the really good games in there. Games like Bug Hunter really impressed me. It was like, holy crap, this is awesome. I think that was totally worth doing, what I just did. I am now enormously paranoid about every single threat in my path. This damn dog is pissing me off. Oh, there's my, there's my ticket to survival. That turkey up there holds the key. I hate, though, that it requires yet another rope. So let's see if we can do something like this. You son of a bitch. I'm gonna get you out of there, you silly turkey. There you go. Oh, okay. It's all good. Everything's fine. Put him there. Put a bomb. Oh, that's gonna drop in the lava. Got it, baby. <laughs> oh, another turkey. All right, all right. Crisis averted. Don't let me leave without the bow, though. The ones that actually let me look straight past the pixel graphics and be like, man, this is a great game. I feel like my endorsement goes times two, goes that extra mile of saying that the game is really good. Because even though the graphics actively turn me away, those firemen can end this run in an instant. So let's not let that happen. Um, even though the pixel graphics turn me off immediately, much like the pixel graphics in Undertale did back then. Just trying to, man, this, this level is just a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> just this dark level full of misery. I guess we're just dropping here. Should be safe-ish. Get rid of you. There you go. So, you know... I don't know what the point I was trying to make is. <laughs> I'm trying to say I'm going to all the, all the UFO 50 games with negative bias, actively disliking the art direction. I am forgiven, so I can just go in. I'd let Pokan just say we look down in these kind of levels. In fact, I'm going to use a couple bombs. No, there's, there's no chasm in the middle. Look, it's been a while. Don't judge me for my inability. It is. There is no chasm. Somehow, how the hell did I skip the drill? I have no idea how the hell did I not see the drill. Uh, the dark level, obviously, played play tricks on me. But it's okay. Thankfully, we got ourselves a pile of explosives. So we can just make a giant, a giant shaft all the way down. Very fortunate placement of these power kicks, saving me a lot of work. Put it right there. Please don't blow up. I will be very upset if you blow up. This is really, really nice. All right. Okay. But I've been... Like, the more I play, the more look I look forward to seeing what else is in there. I do see titles and thumbnails of other videos covering UFO 50. It's like, man, the incredible, the sheer variety in this level pack is astounding, man. The more I get exposed to this amazing work, the more it's extremely apparent that it, this is like a masterpiece of video game producing. You don't, it's not like a masterpiece of design, because a lot of the games are very simple and stuff. It's not a mas masterpiece of artistry. It's a masterpiece on the on a masterpiece on the bruh. Bruh. <laughs> bruh. <laughs> what? <laughs> this whip 
I need to return this whip. It is extremely defective. And the arrow was on fire, so it took four points of health. I was like, ah, worst thing that can, the worst thing she can say is no. The worst thing that can happen is I just get two points of damage. Well, this was very upsetting. That being said, you know, we would have had to go to 799. It is pretty crazy that these fellas are still doing, still doing that daily challenge. Fine, let's go into our venture mode. Don't look at the runtime. <laughs> it was a very successful speed run to 799. Incredible attempt at excellence. UFO 50 is a masterpiece of determination, really. <laughs> it's a masterpiece from the game production standpoint. The fact that they took on this enormous challenge and they made it happen. It is just all inspiring. Their cue is the game finisher. I know that he's not the only one. I realize this. You are dead. Uh, I realize he's not the only one. But you know, he's, he's the face I know, so he's the face I latch onto. I realize that the other developers are also extremely talented indie developers. But I'm just sticking with the filler. The feller I am most familiar with, you know what I'm saying? Oopla. We are speedrunning, if you are not aware of what's going on here. Ah. Speedrunning the crap out of this game is a very easy video game to speedrun. Definitely have not spent 20 years of my life attempting to get a decent speedrun. Get up on the bomb right there. I do have a 4 minute 40 personal best, any percent, all the way to Tiamat. I think I have time to just do this. Okay, don't set me on fire, I'll be very rude. I probably could have just bombed all the way down. Anyway, extremely impressed. The more I try it, like uh, I said in the in the video I made leading up. Oh no! Oh, what a nightmare here. <laughs> what a nightmare to get past this guy. The video I made leading up. We do need the bow and arrow if I wanted to. Nah, let's let's do a speed run to Chicken Snake. That is the, the goal right here to reach. Holy crap. To reach Chicken Snake. In the lead up video I did to UFO 50, I was like, man, I've never been excited about this, but sure, I'll give it a try. The more I see of it, and the more I understand the sheer scope of this project, the more I'm like, wow, 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 cannot wait to see what else is in here. It is truly amazing. What a feat. What an accomplishment. Uh, this is not the way. <laughs> we are... We are going this way, I suppose. Holy crap. It was the way all along, baby. And I have been using... Look. I've been using AI thumbnails for UFO 50. And there is a small subsection. What, what am I doing? I'm supposed to actually get out of here. <laughs> There's a small subsection. Let me just do the standard Olmec run. Do this. Small subsection of people who have a huge AI art hate bond. There we go. The zoop has been accomplished. Get me out of here. Huge AI art hate boner. And I can never tell whether it's like, oh, this is lame, or I am fully and entrenchedly ideologically opposed to your AI art, so I've not been going into trying to make arguments or anything like that. Let me make my position clear before I go into this diatribe. How two of those call me in the morning, bitch. All right, before I go into this diatribe, make my position clear on AI quote-unquote art. I don't even consider it art. It is 100% lesser than, I consider it soulless, and, uh, ah, you piece of garbage! 
soulless, and definitely shameful if you try to pass it off as pass it off as your own art. That is just pathetic. <laughs> it's truly, truly, an awful thing to do that you don't I don't respect. And believe me, when I see AI thumbnails, we're, we're dying here, by the way. I'm like, that's lame. I don't like. I, I the look of it is unmistakable. And it's just, just lame. It's just lame to see they're like, eh, whatever. But you, you, I just shrug with my life and, and move on. Because I don't share the ideological hate boner for AI. I understand where you come from. There's many components to the AI hate boner. One is the fact, the incontrovertible fact, that it's being used to basically take art jobs away from people. And for that one, even though it's undeniable that it's happening, it's like, them's the break, bud. Like my usage of it is not going to change that one iota, not even 0.001%. And like, it's gonna happen no matter what. Whoa! And uh, it is tragic the same way that the industrial revolution was tragic for the guy bolting screws onto a Ford chassis. Automation is a thing that is going to happen no matter what. There is no stopping it, no amount of, uh, of ideological stand and grandstanding is going to change it one tiny bit. Only thing that can do it is legislation. And that's not gonna happen. One, lobbyings are gonna happen because there's massive, incredible profits behind it. So you're not gonna stop. Look, the lobbying is not going to allow uh, automation for them being stopped. It is going to happen. You're going to have self-driving cars. And in a way, it has been kind of made me Realize this is a downer take, by the way. I'm not trying to fill you with hope or anything like that. And I'm not even endorsing it. I'm just saying this is reality as I see it. Uh, it's just been kind of been making me realize that we have lived, at least I have. I don't know how old you are. You're already in the tail end of it. We have lived in the pinnacle of human freedom. And it's all downhill, downhill from here. Because the only way you're going to get automated cars that drive you places is, is if there's 70 cameras in that in that taxi or you know the the neo taxi controlling every aspect of it because they don't want to be defrauded they need to know exactly who you are and where you're going and all that stuff so you know you're going to be super controlled that way but don't worry don't worry the government will never abuse that to control the population in any capacity uh, and you can extrapolate that to all the different bits of human advancement. Basically, the bottom line being, if you want a Star Trek future, you need Star Trek regulations. And the Star Trek regulations are massive and all-encompassing curtailings of freedom. This is a point of damage for sure. Like, there's just no way around it that I can see. If the future of humanity is heading that way, well, that is, uh, seems unfair, but we made it through alive. That's amazing. So, from that standpoint, I get where you're coming from, but your resistance is futile. Then there is the eth ethical qualms of the narrative that AI steals the art just gobbles up the content on the internet and then just gives you a copy of it. Well, I meant to write that to the bottom instead of instead of drop it into the lava. That was atrocious. And what I am sure that does happen with less than honest language models, the way that it should happen, the way it's supposed to happen, the way I understand it, and that you would have to provide some real evidence to convince me otherwise. AI doesn't work like that. It doesn't steal an image and then serves you a piece of an image that it saw. 
making a collage. What it does is it looks at two billion images that say elbow and then serves you something that it generates from scratch that looks like an elbow from all the education that it got. And like I said, it is possible that some language models are scooping some steps and giving you a fully signed piece of art that he found on the internet. <laughs> I, I cannot argue for or against that. I just don't know whether it's happening or not. I bet it is. What I'm saying is that that's the way it's supposed to work. And on ideological grounds, I cannot possibly stand against it because I don't stand against users, uh, uh, artists using reference. And are you upset when I go on the internet and I look at somebody else's art? I'm like, I really like the look of this art. I'm going to copy it, you know, with my own style. I know it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but it's really, really close. That's basically how it functions. The, the, it is reference. All these millions of art pieces are references. Now, did people give consent to be fed into the gobbling machine that is... The language model training? Absolutely not. That is the big controversy that's been with Adobe. Uh, how they are using everybody that's using their program, they're just feeding everything that gets done to their training algorithms. You know, and there's uh, something less than ethical about that for sure. But my stance has always been if you put your art on the internet especially for free that's free reign uh, i have seen other people uploading my videos into their own channel and getting like 17 views i never do anything about it i put it on the internet it's free for everybody to take i have all my book like if somebody were turning around selling my books for their own profit is like uh please tell me how you did it <laughs> because i have yet to profit in this venture uh, do you have some pointers to sell my own books? Because I will love it if you share them. But hey, more part to you. It's spreading the word. As long as you don't change the name. Don't change the name on the cover, which the AI sometimes does do. Or rather, it gives no attribution. So I can definitely see some, some uh, philosophical or rather ideological qualms there that, you know, I'm not 100% comfortable with. But ultimately, I'm like, whatever. I really... Uh, it's like another instance of what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Not use it? Well, congratulations. You are a drop in the ocean of millions of generated images. So, you know, while I understand, I also don't care, ultimately. Uh, and then there's the environmental complaint that AI generation is extremely resource intensive. And it's ruining the environment pretty much. It's just so energy consuming. And for that, I got nothing. Because I don't know enough about it. I don't know whether it makes a big impact or not. I don't know whether uh, your environmental claims are legitimate. So I got no pronouncement on that. Other than I also don't care enough not to play around with AI. I'm... Um, be a fool with it. That being said, I don't... Oh, wow. I have never used an online AI generation tool. I just uh, uh, installed the Krita AI server into my own computer. So everything that you see that comes out from my end that is AI generated, it was actually generated locally. I'm not you going to some server. Uh, of course, that also uses electricity in my own house, right? It's not like it's completely free. I'm just saying. I didn't go to Grok and feed it a plus one. I didn't go over there. I mean, look at freaking X, formerly known as the Abyss. Just look at X, formerly known as Damnation for Humanity. Billions! Of ge ouch, generating images. What impact are you doing? And I guess 
there's a good argument to be done to be made saying it's not just me not using it it's also the ah! it's also applying shame for people not to use it and eventually it will spread the word that ai is just unacceptable and to that i just say more power to you wish you good luck on that endeavor you have no effect on me uh well all that being said i would never try to pass off a art as my own it's always just a tool for whatever the hell i'm trying to accomplish i have used it for thumbnails before instead of spending like 30 minutes making a really low quality background i will generate a landscape what, what was that I'm blurred out, and that will be the completely inconsequential background of some image that I either drew or I captured from a screenshot. Ultimately, my bottom line for this very tepid pro-AI argument is not even pro-AI. It is anti-AI hate boner. My tep very tepid defense. What? Why would I blow up the bombs? Very tepid defense. Is that ultimately everything is already stolen. Do you, did I produce the screenshots that I put in the th thumbnails? When I go into the internet and I try to find some stock image, I didn't produce that. Do I need to draw every single thumbnail that comes out it ain't worth the time buddy i don't know if you understand the kind of time investment that will take literally like i have literally done it there is an entire rim world series where i drew every single thumbnail and i super been burnt out on it because it's like two three hours every video two three hours of extra investment because it wasn't worth it so oh Oh, there you go. I mean, it was fun. I also did it when Spelunky 2 came out. You'll see the tons of Spelunky 2 Margaret thumbnails. You can go back and, and check them all out in the playlist. There you go. I also have them in... I think I have uploaded them all into my, my website. They're all just dumped unceremoniously there. Go, buddy, go. All that being said... Please, there you go. All that being said, I feel like we have reached the pinnacle of what a oh current generation AI can do. Uh, I used to be way more bullish. It was like, oh man, this is going to be like an insane pile of generation. Truly, like the next step of uh, computation. The more I've been exposed to the shortcomings that that... Well, what the... The absolute... I wouldn't say... That was weird how I didn't whip the boomerang. Uh, that would weird me out. Um, there's a really clear ceiling to AI language models. You know, the way that AI learns and improves these days... And if we're not there yet, uh, we're reaching it very, very quickly. And the ceiling is just the volume of human production. It's running out of things to train on, so it is starting to cannibalize itself. It, uh, AI is an incest fest. It is happening right now. There's so many instances, uh, especially in the coding department. It will, because everybody, so many people are using AI for coding it is starting to sample code that was generated by AI. So, you know, much like the very well-known adage of a copy of a copy of a copy, you start getting incestuous code and it one, it homogenizes everything to the point that there's zero variation. And two, it creates this soup of just bad code <laughs> ah, just go yeah this soup of just incestuous code that is just trash all around 
And that is also have. Oh, why? Why does it sometimes just not go into his butthole? Huh? Why? I don't agree with this. Need to go properly shoot that bomb. Get in there. And it's also happened with with art. Hey, art though, I feel like it hasn't reached its pinnacle yet. You see all the all those. Uh, video generations and all that. It's definitely advancing a, a breakneck pace still. But it really feels like it has some serious hard limitations. The way that, that it just... The way that it's designed. The way that it works. So while impressive, the results, they're not going to be to the point of make this movie with this exact... Oh, Make this movie with these exact uh, parameters, blah, 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 and it will create a masterpiece. That's never going to happen. Uh, basically, AI products is just slop. And uh, it is only a legitimate tool to save time to legitimate artists. For example, in the instance that I said where I just use it for a quick throwaway background. It's basically great for anything you don't care about. Because it's this soulless slop that is worth nothing. <laughs> and uh, something that has baffled me so much is the way that AI books have flooded the market. They are all over freaking Amazon. It looks like a, like a real problem to wade through that sea of trash. And it's like, why? Who reads an AI-generated novel? Who puts it out? I mean, obviously, people are just scammers. They're trying to make a profit by working 10 minutes <laughs> and getting a prompt out of uh, chat GPT, passing it off as their own writing, you know, just scammers everywhere. But... What baffles me is like, who pays money for this trash? <laughs> you know, then you see uh, also uh, the volume of publica published absolute monstrosities. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe it's not so baffling <laughs> after all. You know what? Give me a point of health. I really do have because I did not realize I only had two ropes left. Anyway, I know that I am upsetting those among you that do have uh, real problems with AI. You're probably going to have some serious rebuttals. And I promise to read them carefully. Because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I have a, a complete misconception of the facts of the matter. And I've been completely overlooking something that is extremely obvious. That is a massive detriment to everything. I, like, I understand just how bad it is for society in general to have all this slop out there. That it has no soul, no human interaction. Oh man, I picked the wrong side. But that is a problem with the users, not the tool itself. Ultimately, I see it as another instance of human innovation destroying an aspect of the human experience in favor of the advancement of some other aspect. And if you wait for everything to be used ethically and responsibly, wow, what an absolute giga chat I am ducking under the fish attack. Truly an impressive feat of spelunking right there. If you wait for every innovation to be used ethically and responsibly, you will be still in the Stone Age. You will be the person that, that fought against the printing press the person that fought against the loom did not want anything done other than sewn by hand. The person that stopped that factory from being built because it was taking away so many jobs. And it's like, you're... Oh! <laughs> I understand your argument. It is a legitimate argument. Human suffering is being created. But ultimately... I kind of take the, the long view. I don't want to sound like I'm more full of myself and have much better perspective than you, but I do. It's... Uh, take the long view of, look, human suffering. Human suffering is the default human condition. 
and without human suffering, there will be zero innovation. So bring it on. Bring it on, destroy jobs. <laughs> bring on the apocalypse. Hopefully we will get through it and it's just growing pains instead of the end. And if it is the end, well, it was a good run. Oh yeah, give me this compass, baby. Oh, no, hey, uh, I'm a little too cynical. Maybe I'm a, I'm a little too detached. But uh, if you're not detached, you don't make rational decisions. There you go. That's my argument right there. An argument for you to be less caring about the human human suffering. <laughs> am, I, am I winning hearts and minds with this? Or am I uh, getting a massive subscriber exodus because I am running my mouth and not knowing what the hell I'm talking about? Either way. Either way. There, I've said my piece. The AI thumbnails will continue because I find them funny. <laughs> and there is no detriment, like nothing bad is happening to anybody when I use those AI thumbnails. What is... What exactly is it that is being uh, harmed in any way? Because obviously... Actually, it's not obvious because I always get somebody saying a comment like, is that an AI thumbnail? I thought better of you, Blargo. Uh, uh, but it, it is done for the entire purpose of th putting out a completely soulless, soulless piece of super polished art, quote unquote art. In fact, it's kind of a misnomer. Like, we only call it art because it looks like art, but it ain't. It's just product. It's a AI computing product. It's not even AI. Yeah. There is no intelligence be f behind all the artificiality. Well, this is a problem. <laughs> oh, we've been 42 minutes in here. What the hell? I've been too focused on all the Spelunky 2 speed running plus talking out of my ass. But anyway, I thought that I felt like I needed to kind of explain my position at length instead of just a, a comment here and there. I never want to get into arguments in the comments. That way lies madness. Get into a back and forth in a comment section. What an absolute pointless waste of time that is. So, you know... You'll never see me trying to do that. Sometimes I'll quip you. I'll give you a quip. Most of the time I'm either silent or just uh, I'm flippant. But I thought it kind of needed like an in-depth explanation as to why. Because I share most of my dis most of your disdain for AI art, uh, art quote unquote. I share it, but. I'm not so much blaming the tool as I blame the user. And there are use cases where it's 100% justified and it's a massive boon to an artist to have that tool to save time. Because let me tell you, if you're an artist and you're mad about AI, probably it's because you're a bad artist. Sorry if this, if this I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings, but it's bad artists that are concern about losing their jobs to AI. Like, take a moment to th to think about what you're saying. You're saying that this soulless machine can replace you? How bad is your art that that uh, this thing can do better than you can, that you can? And I'm not saying quality. Obviously, the hyper polish is part of the problem of the AI work because you can always tell it apart i've been putting out the thumbnails and people can always tell it apart people can tell it apart it is this uncanny valley thing and it's always if not obvious you can just tell i chose the wrong the wrong side and everything is ruined you can just tell so do you think the consumer cannot tell in general they can and it's always a, a downgrade of the quality of your work. But 
if the corporation can replace you is because you were not doing great art to begin with. And I understand you are... It's annoying because I have to constantly qualify it with I get it that it is an art job that you had and then a robot can do it for you and suddenly you don't have a job anymore and that sucks ass. All I'm saying... All I'm saying is that people throughout history of human advancement have, have been in your exact same spot and the only tragedy is that a field that we thought was untouchable by automation, suddenly it can be automated. Oops! Well, <laughs> nobody saw this coming. But there it is. Like, there's no change. There's no fighting it. There's no changing it. What is your salty voice going to do besides the million dollar corporations that stand to make literal billions of dollars of savings? <laughs> because they don't need to employ you anymore. Woo! And, you know, I understand the uh, entire argument of if you take away so many jobs, the populace will have no money and there will be no money spent. And I'm not saying, so what? I am saying, yes, that is going to happen. It is inevitable. What you gonna do about it? It's not like a sarcastic, what you're going to do about it. It's more like, well, have a plan. What are you going to do about it? You're going to need to do something about it or just starve to death. I'm just pointing out what reality is shaping out to be. As I see it. Anyway, getting way too deep with the, the this topic. They didn't mean to aggro you. You probably went and came in here just... Good old, uh, good old Splunky shenanigans. Why am I being bombarded? Ah! Why am I being bombarded with this topic? Shut up. I'm playing the damn video game. You'll keep dying in the dwellings. How about you train a robot to teach you better Splunky gameplay? That is also possible. A robot could take my job as entertainer. I'll be the next Quibble Pop. Woo! Was that the name of the guy that created a uh, language model to supplant him because he didn't want to do videos anymore? And instead of just taking his riches and retiring, he <laughs> created a robot to be a facsimile of himself. <laughs> it's like, how dystopian can you get, bud? Just take your money, invest it, and retire. Why subject people to this abomination? Off you go. How about this bomb actually killing you? That would be great. It is impossible to, for it to happen. It just it just never comes to pass. Just get away from it. Okay, okay. This. <sighs> Bleh. We've been 48 minutes here, but I kind of wanted to have a run that was even slightly successful. We did get not to Neo Babylon, but to uh, the Ice Caves one time. Pretty sad we didn't get any further than that. What you got, baby? You got trash. We're gonna go down this way. This entire arrow trap configuration situation is insane. Anyway, there you go. There's my standpoint on things. You may be mad. You may be nodding your head in agreement. Bruh. <laughs> And I am open to whatever you have to say. But you are very unlikely to change me from the callous piece of garbage that I am. It's not that I have no empathy. It's that I always try to just pull back. Pull back beyond. This has immediately immediate detrimental consequences. Yeah, but what will happen next? And how is this possibly going to be changed? What is the practical way of looking at this Bruh. okay this is it buddy we're going to go into spelunky 2 with fresh eyes this is going to be the most incredible speed run you've seen in your life the best used bomb in history truly an impressive feat 
of level navigation. Oh, okay. Yeah. We grab the hamster. We put it through the exit. You know what? You know what? You know what? Give me all these bombs. They belong to me. And now we're going to make paths. We are so elite. Instead of finding paths, we make them. Can't possibly pass up the chest and key. <laughs> I hate everything about this. Ah! Ugh. <sighs> that is why you don't piss off shopkeepers in the, the speedrun. It's so annoying to deal with exits like that. Some exits are so trivial to get through. Others are an impossibility to get around the damn piece of garbage. And I guess, you know, you can, you should, ooh. you should just play the averages and just hope. Just hope that the exit will be traversable. Oh man, I am now, I think climbing gloves is by far the most drastic change in Splunky 2. That definitely always takes a bunch of getting used to. Murder. As opposed to the rest, which yeah, is very natural to slip back into this Splunky land and get through these places without too much trouble. I hate the fact that we kind of have to do this. Okay, we didn't have to do it at all. It just went away. No forgiveness. I must have uh, maybe thrown some debris to that scum lord. I didn't murder him. Come on, buddy. We weren't supposed to do that, but uh, I guess I accept it. Or, you know, a couple bombs really should have thrown uh, at least one of them. Truly really pathetic showing, but at this point I'll take another expedition into the ice caves. That would be great. Uh, we have four bombs, so we don't want to be wasting them. Well, that sucks. <laughs> you piece of garbage! Get wrecked. Did you know that they tripped on active bombs? I did not know that. I did not realize they did that. Oopla. Yeah. Okay. What a nightmare of a jungle level. Oh, well. Violence has been visited upon shopkeepers yet again. That was the most nightmarish jungle level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're making our way past this nonsense. This is the idol. Probably leading into a, a nightmare. Please. I just want to get around all this nonsense. Bruh. Pissing off even. <laughs> we're doomed. Okay, we're just doomed. No resources, no hope, no exit. Climbing gloves are an absolute atrocity. <laughs> Alright, made it. Made it that far. We can just descend all the way to victory, huh? Oh, oh exit the other way. It's alright, it's alright. We're going to... We're going to get absolutely murdered. Look, I am committed to having a decent speed run. See if we can have at least tide pool be great. Take a couple. There you go. You have bombs and spike shoes. Well, saved by the turkey. Good stuff. This is is this the exit? It shouldn't be, right? It is. Amazing. Wow, what a great point of damage I used to. Amazing. Alright, please. Stop running into enemies. That's a, a great way of stopping death from taking you. Wow. Wow. Absolute trash. Anyway, UFO 50. I have a few too many. Too many video games right now. I am in an eclectic phase of my life. Trying out new games left and right. UFO 50 and otherwise. 
think there's an exit here. It is not. But hey, he has a jetpack. It's alright. Everything's fine. Everything goes according to plan. Kali will embrace him. Well, this comeback is gonna get me. Alright, alright. This jetpack is gonna change everything! We're going to Chicken Snake. Just you wait. Bypass? Bypass everything? He's chasing me. He's after me. He has my number. I cannot escape. <laughs> hey, forgiveness is me. Uh, seven ropes. Violence pays off. Please, let me through. I hate that you are on this side. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Very extremely manly yell. Cannot stop me from being the manliest. Please blow up. Hey, all right, give me that good stuff. I didn't like that spider. So, oh, that's right, we got forbidden, forgiven. Let's go to Volcana. The jungle depresses me to no end. It is so awful to speed run through it. At my skill level, of course, I'm sure there's some absolute elite gamers that drowns the jungle but here I am with my puny pathetic skills this is the best I can do uh, okay good stuff good stuff don't fire me brother all right good level fully committed oh we have four points of health don't laugh at me you piece of trash Holy crap, man. These volcano levels are a nightmare to get around. All right, there you go. Just a matter of reaching the end one more time. It's all good. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> should that have set me on fire? I have a feeling it should have. I mean, I threw him, but he bounced back from a different enemy, so it's like, it probably should have murdered me right there. Thankfully we made it this far. Don't really want to use bombs, don't want to use any kind of shortcut, nothing. Just get, get Mr. Olmec down. We're going to carry on. Off we go to the exit. Can't believe I've been an hour doing this nonsense. I guess I'll bomb, I, it would have been almost the same. Just going around. Yangshi's always a massive problem with getting whittled down. Their jumping patterns are so damn unpredictable. Always pissing me off. Hey, hey, don't do it. Okay. It's the ninja Yangshi's. Oopla. I've drawn a ninja Yangshi with giant titties. I was like, I thought it was fun. Most of my motivations for, to doing like 90% of some of the things I do, it's just that I find it, I find it mildly amusing. <laughs> so I just do it and to hell with the consequences or I just don't care about the cost or whatever the hell happens out of it or whatever it costs me. I mean, obviously, to a to a limit. Ninety percent of all my motiva motivations ever is like it made me giggle. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! I can just go down this way, right? This is the exit. Yeah, baby! Oh man, there was a shop there. Maybe we could have stolen something. Okay, I escapes with a jetpack. Okay, very peaceful. Receive, receiving. We really should get some spike shoes, but whatever. Just going for the exit. Just going for the exit. Care not one bit about anything but the exit. There you go. Hey, made it to Neo Babylon. The absolute most nightmarish Spelunky, t Spelunky zone in general. Like nothing else exists that is this bad. You guys remember? Remember when first arriving at this place? What kind of a horrible... Oh, come on! <laughs> this 
goddamn force field. This is not the... <laughs> I thought I was heading straight for the exit. It was here all along. Fucking absolute buffoon. Okay. Remember when first playing Plunky 2? Arriving at Neo Babylon and being like, what the hell is this death trap? And it really is an absolute death trap. It is so insane. The learning curve of uh, World 6 is brutal. Where is the way down, buddy? <laughs> Does it not exist? I guess not. Woo! That was my bomb, so that's why I didn't blow up, really? I don't think I've... Like, it's been years since one of those shots <laughs> caught me. Truly nightmare situation here. So, what do we even have to kill Tiamat? Absolutely nothing, right? So we're just ignoring Tiamat. So that's what we're doing here. We're using a bomb right there, and we're, we're going to ride a bubble all the way to the top. And we're gonna do a skip, baby. We do have six ropes. I could go for just winning. My personal best is four minutes, 46 seconds. So it's like I, I have a great run. Oh no! <laughs> Crisis averted. <laughs> it's not like a, oh, you absolute buffoon. Not all is lost though. I thought it was just just a bad play. Just a bad play. Don't even make an excuse. Just a bad play. I think I'll be okay. I thought I had spring shoes is the problem. I thought I had enough, but clearly not. Well, we got this far. I'm going to count it as a win. Not looking forward to uh, the rebuttals, but I'll give them a chance.